Any alternates? I think we have a full complement of commissioners. Thank you, everybody. Um, first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the March 1st regular meeting. Um, I had made some edits to the first draft and it was on the Dropbox on Friday. Um, my edits were in yellow. Um, anybody have any other comments? Um, um, yeah, I didn't see your edits. I, I just see what's in the Dropbox and I had a couple of things. Okay. Um, first of all, you know, we have absent is Melissa is absent, yet later on in the meeting, she had comments. Say that Melissa? Yeah, um, huh? Osborne, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And maybe she's two different people. One time she has a knee and one time she doesn't. Um, um, but so she must, have, <laughs> she must have come in late. No, she's under present and she's also under absent. Oh, okay, so maybe she came in late then. <laughs> okay. So, right. And then the so other one is, I, Kevin. let's change her to present. Okay. The All other right. one is, it was a little confusing um, in the minutes because we have two different Doyles in the in the in the meeting. We had Commissioner Doyle, and then you yep. had Presenter Doyle, and then so your head okay there, Mike? Um, so it was a little, you know. So so Mr. Doyle made a, um, a motion, let's see, Mr. Doyle made the motion on line, uh, well, well, so we have several Mr. Doyles in, in line 68, which is our, is, is, is Mike, and then seconded by Mr. Doyle on 80. And then the next paragraph, when we're dealing with the, um, um, you know, like, like nine, line 90, you have Mr. Doyle from Lada. So we never really, I, mean, we, I think we should have just done a better job of distinguishing between the two Doyles. Always a good thing in my house to distinguish between the Doyles. The Doyles, yeah. We want the guilty <laughs> ones and the not guilty ones. Yeah. But even if you just do an M or something, you know. Or just commissioner, change my Mr. Doyles to Commissioner Doyle. Yeah, commissioner Doyle, yeah, that would be a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah. that make it clear. That makes it obvious. Yeah. That was okay. that was one of my submissions, Mr. Chairman. I also noticed okay. that we're missing a space between March and one in the header. Okay. And Madigan in second on line uh, 162. What's missing, Kevin? That's a space. Line 62, 162. Line 62. 162, 162. Oh, of the, yeah, of the zoning? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I had, uh, go ahead. 162 has Ms. Madigan seconded. Ms. Madigan seconded. It looks like her last name is Madigan seconded. Space is missing. Yeah, just a space. We get that as 163, okay. All right, well, then we're looking at two different minutes. So we may not have your changes. Right, because... Yeah, I had I had edited them and my edits are in yellow. And the things that I changed is Donna Beinstein's name was misspelled in uh, line 15. Um, oh, yeah. Line 39, brick pavers around a fireplace. I think there was something, it didn't say fireplace. It said something. It'd be like, fire pit. Pit, yeah. Fire pit. Okay. And with the possibility of fencing it around around it and propane feed. There was some other word there. This is the fire district. The feed, the word that most accurately describes it probably would be supply, right? They planned on oh. having the ability to supply, basically okay. fire the pit with propane. Okay. With a portable bottle. Okay, we got that, Laura. So it just needs to say propane supply. Period. Propane right, supply. Mike? Yeah. 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 Right. Supply yeah. is supply is the word. Yeah. Right. And in line 40, 
four forty five forty six, Mr. Gray inquired if under use underground propane for the fires. Then there was a sentence that two two sentences that I deleted. I don't know why, but they didn't seem to be needed. Um, so I took out, it was drafted. It was clarified that use, use class A material and no propane was used in the buildings. I think that was inconsistent or incomplete. All right, I don't even see that. It, 44. 40, probably 45. Yeah, I don't know. The minutes on the Dropbox are old? The minutes on the Dropbox are the updated minutes. Yeah, I know. I printed mine before Friday. So I don't have uh, the, the okay. edits that Dave is going through right now either. All right, I have yeah, a I'm set gonna, of my own. Yeah, I'm not seeing some of this stuff. Well, we'll so the, the we can, uh, minutes don't have anything about Class A, which was actually hay, wasn't it? Is what he said with the Class A material. Oh, right. It was hay, yes. But I, that's not even in the minutes that I see. Okay, it was, it said, in the original, it said after Mr. Gray inquired if they used underground propane for the fires, it was clarified that use class A material. And there's probably something missing there. It was clarified that they use class A material and that no, no propane is used in the building. So we could put that back, Laura. That would be better. Yeah, what it now says is at this point, the proposal is for the same technology as the old building, small restrictive spaces lined with ceramic tile. So there's right. no class A in there at all. Okay, so the minutes, there were two cap. One is my minutes that I edited, and Laura put those minutes edits in and put them up. So that's why you've got yeah. that missing because it was deleted. But we're going to put that back, okay? Anything else that anybody has found? Yeah, on uh, line 114. Well, it's 114 on you know my set but uh, it's it, it, there's a reference in the middle of the line to mr gray inquired what would steps would need steps would need to be taken no it, it does now say it inquired what oh what would steps what would steps? Well, would I, steps. I probably spoke like that <laughs> now the first wood needs to go out of there so it's delete the first wood only one yeah. was needed yeah what what steps would be taken yeah Yep. Then uh, line 143. Yeah, we, it says we a motion that we send a motion to Dino Nobel. I think it oh, was yeah. a motion was that a we send a letter or something. It was a letter. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay. I, I don't know if we got this one already. Uh, not line 20 on my sheet. Is a motion seconded by Ms. Gray. Ms. should be Mr. Oh, yeah. I missed that one. Oh, yeah. Me too. Good catch, Bruce. Yeah. Well, it's Mr. <laughs> further down, so we want to have a match. Okay. That's it. Okay. The most the riveting most discussion I can ever remember about minutes. Minutes. <laughs> Okay, did we move to adapt them as modified? So moved. Who's second? I'll second it? Who moved? That was Kevin. Kevin and second by Mike. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, they carry six nothing. Good, thank you. That was a lot of work. Okay, the first order of business is application. 20-09 of Mark and Iki Scully. Ika. Um, Ika. Ika. Okay. Ika. And I guess 
they're going to tell us what uh, changes they've decided on. Yes, yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the chance to, to make this presentation. Um, did you see the earlier version of um, of these plans? Because these are these are revised. <clears throat> yes, you had you had presented some to us, and then I think the design review board had some questions, and so we just uh, tabled it. Or right. Yes, Great. it was tabled. Yeah, because this is a 20 dash something. Right, great. So um, uh, if you've seen them, then I don't need to go over the whole history, but I will uh, maybe just preface it with um, the, you know, our 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 goal all along with, um, with taking on the Ensign House project was not only to restore this beautiful building, but do it in a way that is energy efficient and reduce its, uh, its, its environmental footprint. So solar uh, was always sort of part of the plan. Um, it, uh, the idea of generating some of, some of our of, of our electricity needs on site, something we wanted to do. It's taken us a while to figure out the best configuration, but um, I think the the one we have now is um, it, it's you know it's it, it's a compromise, but I think it's um, it, it's it's a really good approach. So what we're proposing here is two solar canopies or carports covering. Uh, portions of the, of the parking lot and um, a, a number of panels on the roof of the annex, not on the Ensign House proper, but on the, on the, newer, the newer annex uh, building. And um, the, diff the main difference from what you saw the last time uh, that, we, that, that we brought this forward is um, that there, there are two canopies covering parking lots. Uh, one of them is much smaller than before. The one that's on the southern edge facing Dino Nobel, that's the same as what we proposed before. Um, the one that is covering the interior parking spaces um, is significantly smaller than before. What we had before was, was a big rectangular or pretty much square, actually long span sort of tabletop covering uh, that whole parking area. And what we've done now is we've reduced that to just covering two rows of parking spaces it's a it's a cantilever design, so it's got posts and then a and then and then a slanted uh, um, surface uh, housing housing the panels. So um, that's much smaller than before. It's not visible um, at all from the roadway. Um, its general uh, presence is smaller. So in particular, if you're at the Ensign House on the sidewalk, or if you're in the hair salon looking out their window, which is sort of at sidewalk level. Um, much smaller presence. You'll probably bar really, really barely see the thing. Um, the um, the footings are concrete, and some of them are in the dirt. Some of them are in uh, sort of in between parking spaces. The ones that are in the dirt, we want to keep to a minimum, sort of six inches. The ones in the parking spaces will be about eighteen inches. Um, you've got, I think you, I think you have two renderings of the, um, of the carport so you can see sort of, you know, what, what they're going to look like. Um, I think any other details I should cover? There are gutters on them. There's lighting underneath it. Right. We have light street lights that go out to the parking lot now, and we'll just convert them to being attached to the uh, underside of the solar panels. So we'll we'll lose one existing light that uh, that that is there over near the near the dumpsters, and we'll replace that with some lighting underneath. Uh, we're not changing the parking configuration at all, so same number of parking spaces, and uh, we're not changing the uh, uh, any impervious surfaces. The um, as 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 Ika said, the the carport covering uh, the interior parking spaces will have a gutter, and direct the uh, the rainwater into into the catch basin. The one that uh, that extends over um, towards Dino Nobel really doesn't need a gutter. That will just drain off onto that onto that side and in, into that already pervious surface. Um, and these solar panels are bifacial, so they catch solar from above, obviously, but they also catch um, reflected rays from below. So both sides are active, and I think that's pretty cool. And the the a lot of the, you you won't see a lot of wires. Um, they're all very 
tactfully tucked away. And the, the, the one of the characteristics of the bifacial panels is that they're more translucent. So it won't be sort of a dark presence underneath there. There is some light coming through. Um, and as Ezekiel said, um, you know, our, our um, solar installer who is here tonight, if we have questions, um, is um, really goes to great lengths to conceal all of the wires. So we're doing everything we can to make these, uh, this structure as attractive as possible. Um, the, the core sort of industrial structure of the, of, of the, of the, of the canopies will be um, painted gray as, as they're seen in, in the rendering. Um, and you can see they are an, um, an I-beam structure. And we've, uh, we had a lot of discussion and we, we did a lot of looking into potential uh, designs here. And uh, the alternative is boxing these structures in. And we have actually went and looked at some canopies that have a box structure and we found them to be actually clunkier and more industrial. And this, these I-beams actually, we think are going to look better longer. It's, a, it's really a more of a, of a slender and tapered, tapered look. So um, we are doing everything we can to make these, make these, um, make these attractive. There are co-benefits to having uh, solar canopies. They, in addition to producing electricity, um, they'll have some shading and protection from the elements for the for cars parked underneath. Um, so everybody's not fighting for the one tree that's left <laughs> to, to park under the shade. It, it but Mark, what is slanted option one? What is different about that? The different from from the design we had before. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why that one was marked. Uh, marked. Um, Slanted option one, I was looking for, is there an option two? Yeah, there's a slanted option two. So what's the difference? Yeah, the, the way the, um, the artist who did the rendering, he's just uh, named, those are different views. It's the same okay. set of, of really just a different perspective, right? Once he's put those in, he can look at it from anywhere, so. And, and, the, and the difference from before is just uh, that carport that's covering the interior spaces. It's much, it, it's, it's much smaller. And, and we didn't, have solar on the roof of the annex before. All right. Any other comments from commissioners? Questions? Donna? How, how high are those? They look pretty high. Yes, we need to make sure that the low end, you know, that the one, the one that's um, covering the interior parking spaces is um, the one where the height is the most concerned because you've got a low end there towards the eastern edge. And we want to make sure that that is tall enough that you know, a pickup truck with a ladder could could be underneath, and um, we're. It, it looks like that'll be about ten, maybe eleven feet tall at its lowest point. Okay. What is the life expectancy for these? That's a good question. I don't know if our solar install. I think you know the the panels are typically guaranteed from a performance standpoint for twenty five years. We'll have to replace the inverter after maybe ten. Um, and at that point, you know, who knows? At that point, probably the the we have we're going to have such higher efficiency panels. We'd probably keep the structure and, and replace the panels. But is is twenty five years a good number, Dan? Absolutely. I mean, they they'll keep working. I mean, they've been working for seventy years. But um, you know, they they uh, they'll make nicer panels, but they'll keep working if you if if you leave them. Doesn't the efficiency drop off? It does. Over time. It, it, a, a tiny bit, like they say about half of a percent per year based on like dirt building up. Um, but in reality, with the way the weather has changed and in, in, in such, there's actually more sun. So solar panels are producing more than the ones that we were putting on 10 years ago. So it's, it's tough to say. Okay. Mike, questions? I, I don't have any questions, Mr. Chairman. Bruce? I have, I have a couple questions. I, I'm curious about, uh, I'm looking at the material that we were given last September at our meeting on the 21st. There's a uh, narrative uh, about the panels that describes, um, well, in brief, it's the sentence that says below are several pictures of design similar to ours. Oh, and it's, it's really the sentence before that, but there's reference to stone-faced footings. Are stone-faced footings, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but are they still part of the plan? No, no. Not. Okay. The, the, the size of the footing is, uh, is smaller than before, so um, they'll, they'll be less visible, so we're not, we're not going to do that. 
do that. Okay. Well, you keep making the, the footing bigger and bigger, you, you run into less space for cars. <laughs> so it's, it's. Yeah, I'm not criticizing. I'm just trying to be sure that we have a good description of a valid description of what you're going to do. And did you say that you're the underside of the panels are going to have some sort of lighting? Yes. In, in the new plan. Yes. I, I didn't see any reference to lighting on the underside in the original plan. No, but... uh, there, there isn't. Uh, really, what you're looking at, the, um, the, the plans we submitted came from the manufacturer of the yes. canopy. So it's not in, uh, I'm, I, um, apologies, it's not really in anything we submitted to you, but um, we do plan to, to uh, we'll be losing one light post down mm -hmm. by, the, by the dumpster. So we want to at least replace any lighting with some downward facing lighting underneath the canopy. So you don't actually have a lighting plan? We do not have a lighting plan uh, yet. No. Okay. Um, I was also, as a matter of curiosity and not anything more, but I was curious as to whether you ended up with more square footage in terms of the panels when you went up on the roof of the older building. Um, instead of, you know, when you made the one in the parking lot smaller and then put panels on the roof, do you have more now or the same amount in terms of square footage? We have that. Um, I don't know the square footage, but I can tell you the the um, the capacity in kilowatts, and it was about 140 before, and now it's about yeah. 120. So that's proportional to the area. Okay, so you're down a little from yep. the original plan. Dan, do you have any comments? Uh, the comment I had would would have asked is what uh, Donna asked was that it looked like it was very very tall. But then the explanation was given it would be for trucks with ladders. Okay. And, and both parking areas would be the same height high? Well, the one on the south, the one that um, covers that row of parking spaces facing Dino Nobel, that the low edge there is actually over the dirt. So that should be higher. Um, I could look, look that. It's in, it's in the plan. We could check that. But that should be higher because you want because the panels are sloped towards the south i think it's in the plan i can look check that have you submitted the plans yeah yeah we, we submitted the plan so we've submitted a survey and then the plan from the uh the manufacturer of the uh of the solar canopy and that it's 183 the high point of the southern mm -hmm smaller array is 183 uh, and three quarter inches. So what is that? That's, um, that's 15 feet. One okay. last question. I, I, I noticed in the, the color renderings that we were given, the upper side of these panels are blue, uh, quite a vivid blue. Is that the final color? It's, I think that's pretty close. Yeah, they, because these, these bifacial, they are translucent. And um, Damon, can you comment more on the color? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're a little closer to black than blue, um, but they, they, they allow light through the panels as well. So it's never like a dark area. But um, I mean, typic, typically commercial panels have a little bit, you'll see a little bit of a blue in it. But um, when, when they're these by face, so I think to you, the naked eye, it would look more black. And did I, I don't know if I missed it, Mike, did you do a summary already of what the design review board said? No, sorry. So this was discussed uh, earlier this evening by design review board. And, oh, I'm sorry, we just got a message. Um, SCTV, the direct feed is not Melissa, could you just SCTV? Is, are they are you getting messages? They're not running. Yeah, I'm getting two people telling me that we're not on the air anymore. All right, um, that's a problem. Thank so, thank you, Melissa. Um, did they say which one? Are we not on YouTube or are we not on the uh, channel? Um, one says, "Why have you gone off the air?" 
Uh, the commission is no longer on SCTV, it is now advertising and music. Okay. Um, let me, we're gonna have to reach out to Mark Ornstein quick too. He's hold for technical difficulties. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it, we have to make sure we're following executive order. Otherwise, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're going to sus suspend the meeting. Right. Otherwise, an illegal meeting. Yep. Let me. Someone else just told me that it is on YouTube. Yeah, I'm seeing it on, on, on YouTube. Okay. I'm well, seeing it, it streaming on SCTV's actual website. Okay. Well, we're, we're technically, you can watch it live. So we, we are, we are, con we're following the uh, executive order. But let me just uh, email Mark just to make sure. Laura, do you have Mark's uh, tech uh, cell phone? Right. Let me check. Hold on for one second. Okay. Hey, Mike, this is Sean. You're streaming on SCTV site and on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I just want to inform him that we're off the television. Um, if Since we're on YouTube and we're on SCTV's website, like I said, I, I, we, I'm comfortable to say we can proceed with the meeting um, because we just, under the executive order, uh, the meeting has to be broadcast in a, in a way that the public can uh, partic watch if they otherwise would be able to participate. Meaning Mike, where did, Mike, where do we notice the meeting to? What did the notice of the meeting say the Everywhere. address was to tune in? All the, all the above. We're good. Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. So thank you for the thank for the heads up, Melissa. Yep. Um, Bruce, you asked me about design review um, earlier this evening. Design review discussed this application and it came to a favorable recommendation based on the changes that were made uh, to the previous plan, and the Scullys provided a more detailed uh, uh, view from aerials of kind of showing what these panels will look like um, and where they're going. And also the fact that the panel that's in the middle, which would be the closest to Drake Hill in the in the parking lot, um, that was the overall footprint as Mark kind of alluded to was, was decreased. If members remember, it was a larger footprint that was there that and there was concerns that maybe the visibility from Drake Hill would be increased due to the proximity and the size and you know, with the com with putting some of the panels on the building, which are very limited in, in sight, and how they've kind of redesigned the panels, uh, design review found a favorable recommendation on this application. Good, Mike. The um, lighting um, is there adequate lighting in the site plan that we have? So, so the lighting actually was discussed at the design review board too. Um, and the, the comment was 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 really the lightings that were the, the light is that's being proposed will be underneath the the um, panel shielded directed downward so it's really just shining underneath the panel um, and what the the lights that are being removed from the site kind of they they they, lar they light a larger area um, but the balance it should light at least the the parking areas that are affected by this construction. Okay, so it's basically interior lighting. Correct. Okay. All right. Is there a uh, any more questions from any of the uh, commission members? Did you write us? The, uh, and I'm, and yeah. I apologize. I, I don't know why I, I had a staff report, but it's not. I must have forgot to upload it to the packet. The the only two the two con conditions I would ask that the commission entertain on this is that. One, an administrative zoning permit is required for the installation of the panels. And that two, uh, that any changes 
must be made in writing to the to the uh, planning department staff for changes to grading and landscaping. And said said changes are to be made in writing and approved by staff prior to implementation in the field. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion to accept this uh, application 20-09? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, accept uh, application 20-09 uh, of Mark and Scully, uh, Sol Train LLC for a site plan approval to install solar carports at the property located at 690 Hot Meadow Street, um, zone S. CZ with the conditions outlined uh, previously to my motion made by Mr. Glidden. Second. Who seconded? Bruce? Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Carry six nothing. Thank you very much, Mark and Ike. Thank you. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> the next order of business is a discussion of the Stardust LLC um, storage facility. I think this is a preliminary discussion. So, who is presenting, Mike? Do you know? So, uh, you have with you the uh, the property owner, the Antonios, Stephen, and Lisa are with us, um, and they're. Their representative is Terry Hahn from uh, Plata, and I'll, I'll turn the floor over to Terry and company. Thank you very much. This is Terry Hahn, principal of LADA PC. How are you guys doing tonight? Very well. Um, thanks. Uh, if you, <laughs> if, if I can uh, share the screen, I can put some images up uh, for you um, so that you're not going back and forth between Dropbox. Um, we do have... Uh, we do have some uh, changes from what that was um, based on information so that the uh, what was in your packet is a little bit different. Um, this property is the um, old well site, um, 20 Terrafil Road, uh, which is located um, on Terrafil Road before you get to the bridge going over the Farmington River, has a frontage on the Farmington River. Terrafil Road and St. John's Place. Um, it is uh, slightly off of uh, Hot Meadow Street, 10 and 202, but uh, I think it's fairly um, identifiable. The uh, currently current uses are the restaurant. Um, there are two residential structures, some storage and some office um, space that is within the old well building. Uh, just uh, reminding you what it looks like at the moment. Um, uh, the picture on the left-hand side is the front of the building, and uh, the uh, second picture is the rear of the building. The this building's been around for a long time, uh, and um, back back when it was uh, Gemini's, um, if anybody was around at that point, I I do remember even in high school coming here for concerts and a wide variety of things. It had a very very large parking lot because it used to hold a lot of people, uh, and um, those uh, times at this point are are it's very different now. Um, the restaurant use doesn't need as much parking. It's got a very large area of uh, impervious surface. Um, and then beyond the impervious surface is a, a sort of open um, area um, that uh, is flat. Um, in addition, this property uh, in 2015 um, went through a Lomer application, letter of map revision to identify where the uh, actual 100 year flood limit was. It is defined as the 154.2 um, elevation, uh, which is off the top of that plateau as you go down the hill towards the floodplain area. Uh, so when you look at the existing conditions here, uh, you can see that um, on the left-hand side is the Farmington River. There's a floodplain plateau um, and that uh, is identified because of the floodplain soils in Connecticut are considered wetlands. Then it goes up a hill um, and then there's another plateau and just over the top of that hill, there's a driveway here that runs along to the, the structures that are in the rear. Um, that's the limit of the flood um, 154.2 contour. 
the site has multiple curb cuts and there are um, multiple buildings on the property, the old well, uh, there's another residential structure on St. John's and then two buildings in the back. Just to remind us where we're at. Um, there is uh, currently in discussion, uh, the bike path is uh, proposed to extend along Terrafill Road and um, the property owner is uh, in discussions with Jeff Shea and the town about um, cleaning up the curb cuts, um, cutting them back a little bit, reorganizing those uh, so that they're, it's a little bit um, easier to uh, maintain as a bike path. The proposal is to take that large field um, area uh, and part of the, the existing parking and to use it for self-storage. Um, the uh, office for the self-storage would be located within the building itself. Uh, and it would be located so that you would basically come in the corner of the building uh, it, in what is the northeast corner of the building be handicap accessible, and then be able to access the self-storage um, through the existing parking area so that it would be um, easily visible and uh, can be um, main constructed and maintained uh, with good security. Because this area is all nice sands and gravels, um, stormwater is proposed uh, off the edge of the pavement in an infiltration basin uh, so that that would be addressed um, on the plateau. Um, there are changes proposed to the existing parking so that we can reduce some of that pavement, move the pavement uh, associated with the, the uh, self-storage, um, and to provide screen planting uh, around the perimeter, as well as a, a stormwater filter strip um, off on the um, east side. Hang on. Um, one of the, the way that the building would be uh, modified is that we would propose to take the, the window uh, here and to uh, take that out and replace that with a um, door, make sure that the sidewalk is handicap accessible, and then the parking spaces would be on the other side of the pavement. That would give the view straight in, like you see in this photo, back to where the uh, self-storage would be. This is just an enlargement um, in case anybody had any questions. Um, it meets all the requirements for setbacks. It um, is uh, not um, as well as impervious surface, building coverage, et cetera. Um, and uh, I, I think at this point, it's a fairly straightforward application if it makes sense. So our question is, um, do we have any questions that we should be preparing to answer uh, when we come back with a formal application? Uh, and if there are any other thoughts or issues that we should address. Terry, how tall are the uh, Oh, they're a single screens. story. They're single, it's just a single story building. Um, you know, those no, are- No, 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 not the buildings. I'm sorry. The, uh, the screening plantings. Oh, the, the, the screen plantings, what we're gonna do is we'll, uh, on the surroundings um, <laughs> on the north and the west side, that would be up on, let's say a three or four foot high berm. And though, then on top of that would be about a, a five, six foot high trees. Okay. So it'll be, the trees will be taller than the buildings. How about the, what are the materials and the colors that you're thinking about for the exterior? Um, the uh, the self storage comes in a it's a, like a kit um, that that they do so it's a it's a metal um, a type building on a concrete uh, foundation uh, with a roof um, and at this point we're looking at probably an earth tone like a tan color um, and a green like a dark green roof something to make it blend. Mm -hmm. The restaurant is 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 going to go away. No, not at this time. No, no, just a, they're just a, there's excess room within the building itself. Um, and this is the area that's sort of at the front. Um, when uh, was there last week, they were doing um, um, uh, sort of an exercise class in there. So it's about, uh, it's about 300 or 400 square feet within the building that would serve as an office. You don't really need anything more than that. Okay. So the, the kind of the banquet area that they used. Yeah, it's it's right in the corner here. So when you come in the building this way, there's okay. a big open zone right here. Yep. 
So yeah. it would take a corner of that. Um, and, and you really don't, I, I think it's, it's a good way to sort of reactivate the building. There's a lot of square footage in this building that's not being used. Uh, and and okay. it's readily handicap accessible and it keeps the building active. But this iteration is different from the first in that correct. the structure closest to uh, Terrafield Road was identified as the office. That's correct. And it, now it, it's not, it's additional storage, right? Correct, okay. correct. And a and, uh, couple reasons why we did that. The original ones that we put out there did not take into account that we were going to need stormwater. Um, the, our, yeah. assumption, our assumption was that this platform out here, uh, my recollection from frankly high school was we used to park out here all the time, um, but it was not determined to be an impervious surface. So we do need to provide stormwater. So the, the mm -hmm. development um, got, uh, got squished and quite honestly, um, thinking about how to uh, keep the old well building active uh, and to sort of re-envision how that might work, um, diverting the attention uh, to a new office building, you know, over in this area uh, seemed counterproductive. Hmm. Is there still a climate control building? No, not at this time. And how does the entrance closest to Terrafil Road get used? This would be emergency access. Okay. Yeah, the and main gate, a... the main gate that which is all you know, car key, card keyed, and all that kind of stuff would be here. And is there a fence around the really? Building? Yeah, so the, there, there's a fence around the whole complex. It ties into the back of the buildings. So the, there would be fence all the way around here. So when the, the vision is that then when people come with a box truck full of stuff, they're going to put into a unit or two. Yes. They're not coming in right off of Terrafield Road. They're going through the parking lot. They're, right? they're coming through this, this entry. So what one of the things that we did is within wow. the parking lot itself was to redefine that the because there's no islands. I mean, it's barely striped at the moment. So um, yeah. we were defining the, the parking area um, more clearly by adding lanes and islands so that you would be able to you would come in to the gate um, past the old well building and then go in. Hmm. How big? Uh, how big are the buildings? You said they're one story, but are they're, they? They're, they're one story high. Um, they're they're different um, sizes. Some of them are thirty feet wide. Some of them are forty feet. The biggest is sixty. Um, the ones on the perimeter are fifteen and twenty feet wide. Are um, they flat roofed? No, it has a slight pitch on it. So that so we pick up the water um, at, on the uh, shed roof component and put it into the ground. So they're they're just angled in one direction. Uh, the the ones all on the outsides are angled as a single shed roof. The ones in the middle have a peak on them, so you have garters on each side. Hmm. How many square feet total? It's just around forty five thousand is what we're showing right now. So, on on that dimension issue, Terry. What do you, what, for my information anyway, what do you measure the uh, total for the calculation of impervious surface? It's quite a large lot. I forget, was it four acres or something like that? Uh, uh, the, 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 the lot is, is um, I'm sorry, the lot is, I just had a brain fart, uh, is, 12, is 12 acres plus. Oh, okay. Um, and so uh, we are, uh, the existing conditions is somewhere just around 20%. 22% impervious cover, and we'll be uh, a little bit closer to probably 32%. So we're adding about 10% more cover. Right, but you're nowhere near the limit. No. Mm -mm. Okay. That's because of the large wetland well area to the east. Yeah. Yep. Do you have, well, do you have a drawing with any of the, uh, the residences to the north? Hang on. Uh, relative to the site that's why i did the aerial so you can see up on um uh, st john's place there there are two residents on st john's place and then that development um uh so it's very landing yeah it, it is to the north of that 
So our, our interface is this particular area. That's the area that we were talking about screening and um, putting um, a berm on, okay. along these areas here. Donna, I thought you were talking about the residences that are on this property, no? No, I was talking about the, okay. the houses behind it, yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask another question. This might be, I mean, it isn't, it's not your work, Terry, but um, when, I, when I looked at this, the, the Simsbury zoning map, it looked to me like there wasn't any recognition of a adjustment to this line. It shows the flood zone going almost to the building. And I understand uh -huh. that it was corrected, but I mean, I understand that in 2015, there was an application. In 2016, it was published in the Federal Register. So, you know, some a change was granted, but um, our zone hasn't been changed. The Simsbury flood zone still goes up to the building. We're near yeah, the building. I can tell you that um, there is a change in the GIS information when you look at the flood map. So when you add the flood line onto your GIS information, it is different. But I don't know, Mike, maybe you can help us out here. So we're going to be asked to approve something and it's not illogical, but our zoning map says the flood zone goes up near the building. There's no adjustment. Right. And so your your zoning map, your your actually zoning regs refer to the flood insurance rate map, the current one, um, you know, any revisions for the floodplain zone. It's not ideal, but you know, the floodplain zone as it changes, we don't have to update our uh, what do you call it, uh, zoning map, because we refer to the federal document to say that is where the lines stand. So in this case, you know, sometimes when, when those LOMAs are approved, the line moves like the width of your eyelash. So you may not see it on the map, like this case a little different, it moves basically yeah. the length of a building, um, which right. I agree with you. When you look at it, you're going, how can you do that in the floodplain zone? This is a this is the type of use we don't want to see in the floodplain zone. Um, but this is it's 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 been approved by FEMA the the relocation of the, of the the line so they're they're technically out of the floodplain based on their loma, and I would say that because like I said earlier because that preamble you have in your regs, I'd say that they're safe to say that they're they they're uh, uh, outside of the area which would be subject to the floodplain zone zone regulations. Okay, so is there a process to periodically actually update our floodplain zone to the the FEMA's so, map? Well, yeah, it, it, some of the changes we we can have uh, the GIS um, consultant to update because yeah, obviously I'm not I'm not I don't want to sound yeah. like I'm I'm hard to deal with here, but this thing was oh. approved five years ago. No, you're right. You're right. It, it's the consultant ha should uh, update that for this portion. Maybe you we could bring to that to their there. attention. Thank you. I the other thing I was curious about is that means that we're this application submitted would, would be submitted as a B one. Is that your intention? Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't see storage identified as a permitted use in B1. Did I, I it could be, I just did a quick look. I, I didn't know if this conversation was gonna also involve a suggestion as to a change of the zone. It's specially permitted. It's in the special permit section. Okay. That was one of the ones I suggested we change. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any more questions of the commissioners? I think the sense of the commission is interesting. Um, as long as it meets the regs, and we'll have to have a special exception, right, for the uh, use. Right. So it has to. Well. Okay. Okay. And I thank you. If when you come back, though, how I think it would help us to see the draw the elevations. Yes. No. We'll have we'll have okay. buildings uh, for okay. you know so so that we can see what it is and probably a uh, 3D massing so you can see what's going on. Oh, really? Good. Because they're, they're very short buildings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then the next order of business is general commission business. Um, Mike did an update of the industrial regs as he had promised. Um, 
And so I think we should uh, discuss that. Everybody looked at that? No, I have not. I didn't know it was done. I didn't realize it was updated either. Well, do you want to defer that till next time? Well, maybe there's a screen sharing scenario where you could put it up here. How long is it? It's um, it's four pages. Oh, yikes. Can you do that, Mike? Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm using a uh, different device. I couldn't do the uh, screen share tonight. Right, I me, apologize. Yeah. Let me share. Uh, I got it. Okay. I you got it. it. Just happens to be right on top. Okay. I'm going to say screen share. And then I want to pick. Okay. Got it? Now, where did you find that in the industrial regulations folder? No, it's outside the folder. Ah, okay, because that's where I was looking. All right. So, so anything red is deletions, blue underline is is new. And I'm sorry, I probably should have did red strike through, but I wasn't sure. I just wanted to make sure there was a clear difference. Okay. So the first, I think you scroll to the next page. Okay, this is start of page two. Yep. So, so based on a few commissioners' comments, um, we allow certain uses by as of right in these districts, and we were requiring them as special exceptions in our existing. For example, the the private recreational. So, so, so what what happened over at um, uh, Hunter Grist Mill, one in Mill. Uh, Pond, I changed it. Now it would be a, a, a site plan approval for those recreational uses. Um, same thing with the business uses, because we already allow it. I deleted this last sentence, and I and I could show you why later. This could stay or go. It's not a it's not a deal breaker. I was just trying to do something different with similar what the other communities were doing. Um, this was a redundant one. That, as Kevin pointed out, we were we we identified the use, not all permitted, but yet on the next page it was permitted. So I just deleted the 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 first call out because it just contradicted what we've allowed. That storage is is this the storage we're referring to for the thing we just looked at? No, we're, this we're is an industrial zone, right? This is a industrial zone. Yeah, yeah. There's there's another call out for storage. Um, further down. Or warehousing and storage, I believe it's on. It's but after. Okay, seeing the whole second page, Mike. Yep. So okay. truck. Truck terminals and we we put on warehouses. That was the other thing that the commission said. Why do we keep calling out warehouses and contradicting allowing it, but then saying it's not allowed? So it's just truck terminals now are not allowed in the I-1. They're allowed by special permit in the I-2. But if you don't you want to take truck terminals out, we can do that. Okay, warehouses is all right. Next page. So I, I took out the wireless telecommunication uh, uh, uses, and I'll explain later why this came out. Um, uh, well, actually, right before that, we'll go up. The uses that are using that the basically it's a junkyard uh, without calling it a junkyard. It was allowed in the I two as a site plan a site plan approval. I think just for the potential of that kind of a use for obnoxious or you know nuisance related issues you probably want it to be a special permit and go through a public hearing process. So it'll be limited to the I-2 zoning district, but you know through a public hearing process. So the two wireless communications, I, I took that out and I'll explain why, because I rewrote these two uses later. The, uh, the same, the sand and gravel pits. You already said they weren't allowed. My fear with keeping them in, keeping that in the regulations is 
If someone were to purchase a property in another zoning district and say, hey, I want to apply for a use variance with the zoning commission to establish a stone quarry or gravel pit, they could for the fact you have it as a use in your regs. So that's why I deleted it. So it'll get into it's not there. It's not allowed. Um, and then going on to the so the last page is all stuff that I added. And this was based on everyone else's regs. So one, the public utility substations pursuant to the Connecticut Siting Council, probably should Connecticut Siting Council approvals. Already those uses are allowed because the Siting Council will trump you. So I just put them as okay. So there as there's no permits around, uh, required. Mike, are, are they they don't have to even apply to us? The Siting yeah, Council. That's, that's correct. So why do we need but, this? So what'll happen though is let's say that it's it's a tower that's owned by uh, you know a tower company that builds it or or a private individual, and there's some sort of financing behind it where they may have a mortgage on it. If they come in, if we take that out of our regs, they'll come into my office and say, "Is this a legally permitted use under your regs?" And it just it triggers a lot of headaches for the property owner. So rather than taking it out and just saying, "Well, it's non-conforming because." In theory, we don't have the authority under statute to approve um, utility in installations approved by the siting council. I kept it in there to say it's allowed, no permit required. Well, maybe it's the phrasing. If it just said public utility substations as approved by the Connecticut Siting Council, yes. or someone to is not as clear as approved by. I will. I will change that to say approved. Am I allowed to ask a question, even though I'm not seated right now? Sure. Or, yeah. So. When I think Connected Siting Council, I think Windmill and Colebrook, right? Um, and I would hate to put it in here and say pursuant to Connecticut Siting Council and then have something changed via a court case or at a state statute that actually gave localities input. And then we've already granted it over to the Connecticut Siting Council because I, for one, would like more control over something that the Connecticut Siting Council is doing if we possibly can. So I would hate to permit something that that was subsequently so, without having to come so back I, in and watch it all the time. And this was a change. I just kind of, I noticed that other communities were, were putting this in their regs. So, I mean, this is not something I think that, that you know, if, if there's if there's other members would like to see it worded, how it was in the existing regs, it can, it doesn't have to change. How was it wording in, in the existing, Mike? Um, it was wireless telecommunication sites located on buildings, shield from view. Wireless sites were antennas mounted to existing antennas, utility poles, water towers, light standards, bridges, or other structures. But it was only allowed by special exception in the I-2 zoning district. Hmm. And maybe, maybe we don't, we can, you can digest that change for the next meeting. And see whether you know mm -hmm. we, we want to go into that. The other one, uh, new change would be open space, because uh, it's not called out in your industrial regs. Open space in general, that would be okay. No permit required. Medical office and clinics. Uh, I put this as a as a permitted a site plan, um, just because you know you have the issue with we have this office space and what are you going to put in it? Um, with some medical uses looking to relocate, you know. Um, it pauses an issue. If you were, if you recall, uh, Ed Quero, who owns two two five Hot Meadow Street, um, it was rezoned from I two to B three, uh, mainly because he had some office space that he had a medical user that was moving into the building, and legally they they the use wasn't permitted under the existing zoning regulations. So this change kind of addresses some of those vacancy issues by by allowing the medical uses in these some of these already approved office space. Um, retail. So this is just a just it's been the I, I said earlier uh, about the the uses that were called out is primarily accessory to an industrial park. Um, several of the communities we looked at allow retail, but they have uh requirements on what what is the type of retail they allow in the industrial zone so i looked at it from the sense of talking to a few commercial brokers are we going to see anything that would be available for for square footage uh that would be less than three thousand square feet that could work to support a retail use in an industrial zone property and the consensus was no 
So then that's where I, my 3000 number came in. It was similar to, um, I think it was Bloomfield as this reg, um, either uh, Bloomfield or Brantford, um, and then put a cap on 20,000 square feet for a site plan approval. Um, and then retail that exceed 20,000 square feet, special exception. Um, so then those types of uh, concerns of, of the abutting surrounding area would come up once you're dealing with a larger building, a larger parking uh, uh, parking lot, et cetera. Commercial kennels is the next use that I added for uh, specially permitted. A, a lot of the communities ha allow for commercial kennels. Um, if we're gonna allow them the regs, I would strongly recommend that the commission consider that especially permitted use. Um, just for the just for the purposes of if you have a, a doggy daycare, you have a uh, long term boarding facility for ke for kennels and they have to have outdoor runs. That's where we're going to get the complaints of noise, et cetera. It's kind of the nuisance thing that you, you're not going to want to live near the place with the dogs, et cetera. So I think in fairness to someone who may be an abutting property owner adjacent to an industrial zone property or just in a general area of one of these industrial zone property, um, the special exception or public hearing process is an appropriate uh, means for approval of that use. And that's what I had so far for uses. Otherwise, you know, th there was a few uses that were a little very uh, community specific that I think due to our location and their location, either proximity to uh, either mass transit or the highways, et cetera. It, it just, we're not gonna see uses like that. The retail component, I can see that use coming up. Um, and that one of the things that you're gonna start hearing, it's kind of, you know, was brought to my t attention today was um, Amazon is, is now in this phase where they're realizing um, they, you know, the online platform works for certain products. It doesn't work for others. The others are furniture. They're struggling to sell furniture online. So what you may see is an Amazon uh, facility open up where they are, are they selling uh, furniture out of that facility? So that may, you know, this opens the door for a use such as that possibly. That's what I can see down the road because they're going to want something. If they're going to go into an existing building, they're going to want something that's large, cavernous, et cetera. And some of your, like, you know, your areas, for example, Herman Drive, or, you know, you have the industrial little pocket that's off of Deer Park. Um, th th those may be locations where a use such as that may pop up in the future. And I think it's appropriate to plan for that sort of change the market. Mike, though, why the um, $3,000 limit? Because I'm, I'm thinking of Herman Drive area. And, and what, what about a print shop? What does that count as? Is that not retail? Because there's some stuff in there that's sold retail. Yeah, uh, it may go as re I, would, I would take it as retail. Yeah. So I mean, is 3, 000, do we have to limit it to over 3,000 square feet? Well, we could say not to exceed 20,000 square feet. Yeah. No, I don't know that you need a bottom. Okay. I, I don't works. know how everybody else feels, but... Yeah. You know, I'm thinking that the print no, shop up that. there is probably smaller than 3,000 square feet. Yeah, this was just like, yeah, like I said at the last meeting, this was a just started a conversation. Yeah. Mike, and, 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 can, can somebody educate me? How big square footage wise is your typical big box? Uh, 30,000 and up. 30 and yeah. up? Okay, thanks. We've had these discussions. Yeah, I'm learning. Um, and then we, we you know, in the recreational, we talked about, you know, could you have a theater or theater storage? Like, what does that count as? So right now in Herman Drive, you have theater sets, building, and storage. Under so you what? Have the price? Simsbury Light Opera owns a building as you're as you're coming off Lordship Point. It's right. I think the first building on the left. It's yes. a blue building. Um, it's the first building when you get into Herman Drive that's actually on the on the southern side of Herman Drive. It's the yeah. first one that's actually located in primarily in Simsbury. Yeah. So what um, do we consider that? That was that was warehousing. All right. So do we is our warehousing good enough now? Or or, or 
you know. Well, the theater question poses an interesting, you know, question. You know, uh, remember when Gifts of Love approached you about yeah. doing converting one of the barns into a kind of event space, and and the commission uh, gave it gave him a, an interpretation. He gave that catch-all reg that said basically you allow other uses in the industrial zoning district provided they're they're accessory to other to the um, the overall area. I think that's that's how Simsbury Community Farm was able to or discuss the potential of a theater down the road. So well, part of that discussion was about a venue that they could do weddings. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was weddings. Yeah, I'm sorry. With staff, yeah. they, they went one step further about possible theater, but it never got to the commission. They Failed to, uh, there was a funding issue. But that, that drives the same point. I mean, why wouldn't you allow um, a theater in an industrial zone? Um, it's kind of like uh, Long Wharf Theater in New Haven, okay? It's in their food distribution center and it's, you know, and it's successful. Yeah. Um, you know, because you, you need a, you know, a high roof. Um, so there was the theater and, and then the other recreational was, you know, is it specific enough, you know, if you want a dance studio? Um, I forget what the recreate, oh, passive, you know, that's not passive recreation. Uh, no. Um, you know, so, you know, the, the retail recreational um, and self storage. And I think we had the issue up in um, Herman Drive Lordship with a, a truck repair guy. Yep. Um, you know, is yes. that still allowed? Because you did something with truck repair here. We we added that use back in when was that 2018, 2019? Yeah, but is that still in this list? I yes, that's still there. I didn't change that th those uses because that was a that was remember that was pr proposed by the um uh the applicant and okay, there was, so was a text no, amendment at the time. Yep, there was a caveat: no more outdoor storage of unregistered vehicles and yep. equipment. Because remember, we had that discussion: like, what do you do when the car comes in, is all smashed up, and you're waiting for insurance to total it? It's sitting there for 30 days unregistered. Where are you going to store it? Right. Sounds like Getty Station. <laughs> <laughs> what was the answer to that, Mike? Where are you going to store it? Uh, they were going to store it. In, they were going to they were going to store it indoors or in in uh, locations that are not visible outdoors. So actually, that one we added the not out, no outdoor storage because remember they were they didn't give us a warm and fuzzy on making sure that the the junk stays in the building. Um, Dave, can you move up because we also have you know Autobahn is up there too, and I don't know what they qualify as in the in the in the industrial zone. What are you looking for? Um, any vehicle repair. Oh, vehicle, yeah, right there. Excluding sales looking for it's gonna build. Okay, so that does it. No tough story. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So you think we should add theater use as a separate line? Well, I don't know if there's something else that it can fall in with. No, you, you really I think you're gonna have to add that. As right. well, I mean, that was the same one, you know, the rec whether it's a dance studio, um, a theater. Um, like well, maybe I mean, you could just check some other towns on where they arts venue of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Just performing arts rather than theater, right? Because it yeah. could be yeah. a yeah. music yeah. studio yeah. or something along those lines too. Okay, I'll, I'll also ask a few of my. I'll, I'll look around and ask a few peers how how their regs handle that use. Great, and then. I'll figure out a way. The, the question would be, I'm assuming you want to treat it similar to your uh, indoor recreational facilities and, and you know, permitted a site plan approval for both dis zoning districts? Hmm. Yeah, I think site plan's okay, I, for, personally. But. Yeah. Okay. And, and what about self-storage? Is that under... If you no, you're getting rid of that warehouse wholesale or, or storage. Oh, then I'll find it for you. 
So you already have warehousing and the manufacturing processing of assembly of goods by site plan approval in both districts. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's not the same as um, self storage, though. I wouldn't think of that as self storage. Well, do you want me to do you want me to add self storage to that list? Yeah, right I think there. so. I think so because I mean, self storage almost has a retail component to it. Correct. It's individuals bringing things in and out rather than trucks moving things. That is different traffic impact. Yeah, 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 it's different. And then, you know, often they have, you know, they sell boxes and other things. And they rent trucks. They could, but that, that's a whole other thing. Or they offer them at a discounted price as an attraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not all of them, but yeah. No, not all of them. So that's something that you know, we should consider as to whether that would be allowed. Well, Dave must be on the right track because I don't think that that site plan Terry just showed us really is going to accommodate the kind of movement of trucks that I've I've personally been involved in the self storage over on Brickyard Road in Farmington. The company I worked for had two 10 by 20 foot units there that we had for more than 10 years. We used to go over there for record storage, really. Yeah. But there's there's a self storage unit off Hot Meadow Street in the North End already. Yeah, very, very close to this one, yeah. And I never noticed really any traffic going in and out of there. Right, and they have a straight shot. You know, the gate opens and you're it's right in there from Hot Meadow Street. There's no turns. You just turn off Hot Meadow and you drive yeah. straight in. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, Mike, you're gonna you're gonna do another draft for us, right? Yeah, I'll do another draft. It, and I apologize. I was going to have um, breweries and distilleries, so, some definitions from other communities for tonight. And it just didn't get, I didn't finish that. Um, I'll have that for your next meeting. Okay. That was the other thing I promised the commission. I apologize. I, you know, this, this took a little more time than expected. And then we and, threw a special we meeting. Heard, in there. We haven't heard from uh, our town attorney, right? No, we did not. No, we did not. And I asked that, uh, you know, that we'd have it. The commission wanted to see that memo for the next meeting. If you would like me to uh, prepare a little memorandum from you to say, I'd like to know what, when we'll get our uh, sign regs, I can. Sign regs, I can. But I, we have a meeting, I think it's next Friday, uh, another uh, legal meeting coordination and I can bring this up again. Okay. Uh, Mike, I know you just said you were gonna deal with distilleries and uh, breweries. There is that sort of hybrid thing over in Canton on a farm where they have a distillery on the farm. And I think, I'm not sure if they have a limited menu of what they're brewing well, or distilling, but um, it's a farm. It's not an industrial location. I don't they know what they did with their zoning regulations to allow it, but um, yeah, so the, it's something you know, to think about. Bruce, that's, that's a great that's a great point. The farm breweries, the farm distilleries, the farm, the farm yeah. uh, hard cider groups, that's the new use too, that they pop up in a kind of agriculture setting. Right. I can, while I'm looking for the, a good definition of breweries, distilleries, I'll grab those too, just so we have them yeah. and we can add those to the list. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. I think it's dinner time, but I have one comment to make. We, we went through a, an exercise in our special meeting on, on Friday. And uh, I thank you guys for uh, editing the drafts that I put together and getting the bad stuff out of it and making something that was clean and a clean submission. Uh, there have been a few people, I think uh, three or four comments have been made to me specifically about um, cleaning up my language and making sure that I'm saying things in a polite way. And I apologize for that. But I, uh, I just wanted to point that out that you guys were helpful in making sure that what went out was uh, good. So. No, I and team, Mr. Chairman, happy to help. Good, I would entertain a motion for adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Um, I'll second it. Yeah, second by Mike.